with the trail at between five and six thousand feet. That's about three thousand feet higher than the top of the average flying bomb. The first thing we usually see is a small light, rather hard to distinguish from a star, coming in from the sea. Then the searchlights light up and point out the direction from which the bomb is coming. The guns go into action and we wait for the bomb to get through the gun belt. As soon as we spot a bomb that runs the gauntlet successfully, we make a diving turn and go down after it, finishing our dive just behind the bomb, and opening fire to a range of about 250 yards. The doodle bag doesn't go down easily. You'll take a lot of punishment and you have to aim at the propulsion unit. That's the long stove pipe, as we call it, on the tail. If your range and aim are dead on, you can see pieces flying off the stove pipe. The big white flame at the end goes out and down goes the bomb. Sometimes it dives straight to earth, but at other times it goes crazy and gives a wind to blow the aerobatic before finally crashing. Sometimes the bomb explodes in the mid in mid air, and the flash is so blinding that you can't see a thing for about ten seconds. You hope to be the right way up when you are able to see again, because the explosion often throws the fighter about and not sometimes turns it upside down. One bomb that I attacked caught fire and started to dive onto a lighted aerodrome. I closed in behind and opened fire at about a hundred yards, giving it a long burst with my cannon. The bomb blew up, much to the relief of the flying control officer who was watching it on the aerodrome. Fragments of the bomb were blown into my aircraft, and one went into the air intake, jamming the throttle, which was almost wide open. I went home at full speed whether I liked it or not. Fortunately, I managed to get down safely.